Hey guys, today we're getting a little bit more obscure. We have the Yamaha SU200 Wave Sampler. I've been hunting in local stores for pretty much any weird or not talked about sampler in order to try them out and get a good basis for what they were actually like. Before I get too deep into this video, I wanted to thank everyone that has been tuning into these. We used to use YouTube solely to just post beat sessions, but lately we've been having fun doing these sampler deep dives for you. If you have any suggestions or anything we should cover, feel free to post it in the comments. If you want more of an overview or have specific questions about a certain machine, please just put it in the comments. We'd love to share the knowledge. Yamaha's entry-level sampler offering is a six-voice polyphonic phrase sampler with eight pads for triggering loops and one-shot samples. Just for a note, these are not velocity sensitive. There's also an extra audio in pad for mixing external audio alongside your samples. When you hit this pad, it works just like the SP404. It allows any external device that's playing audio to be mixed in with what's going on in the machine. Up to 24 samples can be held in memory, divided into three banks of eight samples each. It requires a smart media card that I think are a little ridiculously priced on the market right now, probably because nobody uses them for anything else. The back of the unit hosts an eighth inch headphone jack, a quarter inch mic input, two quarter inch line inputs, and two quarter inch line outputs. There's also a MIDI in which will let you control the machine from an external device. There's a power button and a jack for DC power. The smart media card, I think, was actually hard, harder to find than the, the sampler itself. Very similar to something like the Roland SP series, but releasing a little bit earlier in 1996, the main concept is the same aside from its lack of sequencer. It's a wave sampler that records samples into its local memory and can play them back in a few different ways. You can gate samples, which means they play as long as you have the pad held down. You can also use the pads as a sample trigger, which will one-shot whatever's on the pad, and it will play until the sample is done. You can also loop samples similar to the Roland units, where you can turn whatever's on a pad into a loop, and it'll just keep playing it. Uh, there are no chopping modes, so you're left to copying samples to multiple pads and then setting the start and end points with that particular sample. You really need to pay attention to um, cutting off any extra sample that's in there because this thing runs out of memory super fast. Recording samples is easy with the right and left inputs. You can use a quarter inch mic cable to sample from a microphone or a synth or a guitar. There's a bunch of options for sample quality inside the machine. It only has about 20 seconds of sampling time. I think the entire sampling memory is around one megabyte. Quality options for bringing audio into the unit are high, which is 44.1 kilohertz, standard, which is 22.05 kilohertz, long, which is 11.025 kilohertz, and extra long, which is 5.5125 kilohertz. The high grade, yields about 42 seconds of mono sampling. If you sample anything in stereo, you need to cut that time in half. Recording samples in is pretty easy. You can just turn on the audio in button and preview your source. The audio signal threshold can be adjusted. When you hit the record button, you can select a pad and change the recording quality. Once the threshold is hit with the volume, the sampler will begin to record your source. I found this method incredibly similar to the Roland SP series. I did notice that the sampler tries to detect the BPM automatically, but for some reason if your source sample is double timed or half timed, it can't really accurately decipher it. I'm going to throw up the diagram in the screen just so you can get an idea of like what it looks like. The Yamaha SU200 can resample anything that's currently inside the machine. When I tried, I couldn't get the resample mode to drop the sample quality, and I constantly ran out of sample memory. Regardless, I was able to get some loops into it from another sampler. The loop play mode basically lets you trigger pads that have loops 
and it will try to beat match everything playing. I could see this being kind of dope for a live beat set, but the memory and available storage both become kind of a huge concern. There's actually a setting in the pad slot that I think lets you dictate the BPM of stuff to help out with the loop play beat sync. Overall, this whole mode kind of reminds me of uh, Ableton when you're in uh, session mode and you can click on strips of cells to have them all play. However, it doesn't work very well with the BPM settings or the BPM detection. All right, so the effects section. This sampler does have a effect, an FX section, but it's not as um, generous, I guess, as like the SP-404. Uh, basically, you have loop mix, which breaks the sample into pieces and rearranges it to build a new phrase, which is kind of cool. Again, most of the stuff that I put into this, it didn't really sound right uh, once it was doing its effect. Uh, Slice also kind of does the same thing, but a bit more intermittently, depending on the value of the knob. Um, kind of reminded me more of like a gate mode. The tech mod kind of reminds me of if you used like a traditional ring mod, but with like a corpus or like some kind of modeling, uh, metallic modeling. At least that's what it sounds like to me. Feel free to disagree. Uh, there's a distortion lo-fi button. It just adds distortion and reduces fidelity. But one of the cool things about this machine is if you record on the lowest setting, it's going to drop those samples far beyond what this effect can do. There is a filter. I believe it's only low pass. I couldn't figure out how to get it to go high pass or anything like that. But the cool thing is it can actually be controlled with either a knob or the touch ribbon, as they call it. There's also another um, button right under the touch ribbon. It says scratch on it. I wouldn't really call the scratch button an effect. Basically, when you play a pad, you can turn on the scratch function and then that touch ribbon will act like a virtual turntable to try and make scratch sounds. Um, I tried a few times to make this sound good, but I couldn't really think of any reason outside of messing around you would use it. I couldn't get it to sound very good. Maybe other people have had better luck with it. Uh, I think the touch ribbon works a lot better as a filter control. That's just my opinion though. Come to think of it, I couldn't get the touch strip to work for any other effect outside of scratch or filter. There's a good chance I was doing it wrong. I'm not as familiar with this as I am with the Roland SPs. It's kind of a new thing for me. Some of the stuff I had noticed while using it um, is that some of the sample playback gets really weird when you're using effects or using loop play. Um, it can make samples fast and change the pitch or both at the same time. It's a super weird issue and I'm not sure if it's something I did or if it has to do with different sample qualities trying to be used over each other. It's only That's the only real thing I can think of that would cause it. There's a weird structure for doing tasks within the machine as well. Um, you need to go into a job submenu, which is hit with kind of like a shift key. Uh, it's a little strange to maneuver around the first couple times you use it. Basically, you select a pad, then hit the job button, which acts as a shift, and then the job that you can do will be listed under the pad as like a secondary function. A couple things I really did like about the sampler outside of its obvious age and like memory restrictions is that when you do record in on those lower quality settings some of the stuff you can put into it sounds awesome it really can dirty up a sample pretty quickly i actually might use it a little bit more than uh an sp for like smaller samples like drum breaks and stuff like that it made drum break sound really, really good on like the low record setting. I, I didn't, one of the things I really didn't like is that there weren't really any EQ settings or any kind of like compression or anything like that, which would have, I think, really helped out um, boosting just the gritty and the griminess of the, the down sample sounds. I think as a sound design tool, it's worth, I think I paid like 150 bucks for this. Just on a whim, walking through like a music store, they had a used one. I would definitely say if you were picking up one of these machines to not be your main creative machine, it would be great for low fidelity 
sound design. Now, granted, its lack of EQs and compression make that a little bit limited, but connect it up to something else and just using the low recording quality modes to give you, I would almost say like a more, like a pretty authentic lo-fi, low fidelity sound. I don't know if I would rely on this for like my main machine. There are a couple dudes on YouTube that actually make beats on this. Well, I don't know if they make the whole beat on it. But regardless, if you dig around on YouTube a little bit, there are some clearly some people who have been using it for years. And it's quite impressive what they can get done with it. It looks like a lot of them have like a better understanding of loop play mode than I do. Maybe I'm doing something wrong with my samples or there's something I need to do in the machine. If you come across this video and you know, please tell me because I'm kind of a little bit more interested in playing with this a little bit more.